Hey everyone, it's Erin Floto here and I am here for my first Tutorial Tuesday. If you did not see my post on my community tab, I am now posting every Tuesday and Friday based on your feedback for me to up the quality of these videos and try to um, produce more quality over quantity and I'm really trying to grow this channel. So if you can also share uh, videos with uh, your friends and family or other people in the creative communities. Um, I would really, really appreciate that. So hopefully I am giving you quality <laughs> that you want to share. So today I am doing my first tutorial Tuesday and I had a whole different plan <laughs> going into this video, but because of all of the issues surrounding the United States Postal Service for those internationally, we're, there's a lot of issues going on <laughs> and I'll get into that later, but I thought it would be fun to do an envelope art tutorial. And what gave me this idea was Olive and August Designs on Instagram. And I will go ahead and link them down below because I saw um, one of their artworks had an envelope and it says buy stamps, text, you. USPS to 50409 and call your representatives to let them know that you want the United States Postal Service saved. So I thought that it would be fun to do an envelope art tutorial um, because I think that uh, to help save them, we need to buy postage and we need to use snail mail. <laughs> so maybe now is a good time to send some snail mail to someone that you love uh, because of COVID, we're not connecting as much, so maybe a handwritten letter might cheer someone up. And there's tons of nursing homes that have been calling for people to send, um, to create a pen pal system and to send snail mail to the uh, locals at that uh, at those particular nursing homes. And I will try to link some more of that information down below. I've just seen it come across Facebook a ton um, in the Bullet Journal Pen Pals group. So I will try to link that information down below. So with all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get into it. I'm gonna get pretty crafty and I think I'm gonna have a lot of fun. So I hope that you all have fun too. And I'm gonna walk you through all my steps on this process. So I will be using this Lettermate stencil. So this helps, I don't know, position things on your envelope, some paint and paintbrushes from Craft Smart, and this holographic dream scrapbook paper. And I'll also be using the Tombow permanent adhesive, the Tombow food and Asoke, and the Tombow mono drawing pen along with uh, a white jelly roll pen. So lots of supplies, but these are all things that I readily use and have around easily accessible in my office. So I encourage you to use things that you have in your office and make them work um, however you want. I picked up this holographic dream. I can't even remember when I did it. I, honestly, it had to have been a while ago. But one of the things you want to remember when you're working on envelope art is if you are going to be putting this in the mail, you need to make it so like edges aren't sticking up and it's not going to get caught in any of the machines that the U.S. Postal Service uses or hopefully is still using. <laughs> For those that are not too up on the news, uh, we have been learning that a lot of those machines have been leaving facilities and making things take a lot longer to process. So if you are ever wondering why your mail is taking longer to get to you, or if you are ordering from my shop, why it is taking longer to get to you, I promise it is entirely out of my control and I don't, there's nothing really I can do about it except for contacting my Congress people. So that sticker is from Shine Sticker Studio, and I actually got that from Michael's. It is a little girl eating a piece of cake. So I thought, why not make this into like kind of a happy birthday type card? Um, this is going to a fake person because I was going to send it to a real person, and then I realized I wanted you all to see me writing the address. So I didn't want to put anyone's actual address on here. That's not fair to them and their privacy. So I had to improvise a little bit. Um, so I used Prince Eric and Ariel 
<laughs> and made up an address for them. And I used the uh, Walt Disney World, like Magic Kingdom, as the <laughs> as the address. So don't mind me when I do that. But I don't know. I just thought it was a little bit funny. And if you're ever concerned about putting like any of these lifting up because of the use of machines, I would suggest probably putting like the clear packing tape over it. And that is a really good solution if you want to still do something like this, but you have some elements that might uh, get caught. So clear packing tape would work really well in this type of situation. So like I mentioned, this letter mate is really good to practice your spacing and things like that and where you're centering things. So that little middle dot will really be helpful for me <laughs> to make sure all of these stay centered, even though I'm doing a lot of lines here. And I am using a pencil and I'm using pens that it, I know are okay with um, erasing over. And then you can see I'm trying to figure out how many spaces I would need and what the middle letter is here. I'm using one ocean way so that E in the word ocean would be the middle letter. And when you're doing that, make sure you're counting the spaces. I always forget to do that. And it wouldn't have mattered in this case because there is one space on either side. But if you're doing like four words, for example, and it's not evenly, like, like the spaces aren't even, you definitely want to make sure you are also including the spaces when counting which part would be the middle. So one of the things I really love to do is mixing up the font style. So you can see that I use some tall and skinny versions and then I do some script and I alternate those so that it's a lot more pleasing to the eye. So where the happy birthday is a script and then the next two, I wanted to make those crystal clear because for th that's the most important part of the address for that to be pretty legible. So I like doing the tall and skinny for those types and then switching it up by doing a script for the quote unquote city, although I chose Magic Kingdom uh, for my city because I mean, I tried Googling where Prince Eric and Ariel were, but I, I couldn't figure out <laughs> where they lived. Then I was playing around with some washi and I figured that was overkill on this front page. I kind of like the very simple elegance and because I'm switching up the font styles, I'm switching up the ink colors, I really wanted to make sure that I was um, leaving the background a little bit more simple. So a lot of you asked for me to slow some parts of my videos down so that you kind of get an idea of how long things may or may not take. So I'm just going to leave a little bit of music on for this part. Um, this is just a regular lettering style where your downstrokes are thicker than the upstrokes. And I will just let you enjoy this uh, real time lettering part.
continue on with the feud for writing Eric and Ariel. And ordinarily, I would be putting, you know, Prince Eric and Princess Ariel. But um, we're best friends, so I, I can go very chill with them. <laughs> and then I am also going to be using a white jelly roll pen. So the white jelly roll pen does not um, show up as vibrantly. So I erased it and then was able to um, just do the white jelly roll on its own. I have a lot of practice with this, um, but so I, I erased it quite a bit. But if you leave faint lines, it'll still work out really well. And one of the reasons why I use the Tombow Mono Drawing Pen instead of a Muji Gel Pen is because I know that you can erase with that. So again, making sure that you're using tools that you can, like if you're going to use a pencil like I did, that you can erase would be really important. But I like the, um, the change of scenery, I guess, the, the change of typography between the mono line of the Magic Kingdom and going back to that feud for the word Florida. And then I realized I didn't, <laughs> I forgot about the whole um, zip code situation. So I just lined it up and put the zip code in with the white jelly roll. And like I said, I was going to do a real letter and send it off, but I realized that I couldn't do an address then. So I just put a Simply Gilded journaling card <laughs> in there so that I can act like I put a letter in there and then get to doing some paint stuff on the back. This is actually a style inspired by Haley Remdy Art, which I will link below her Instagram and her YouTube. Um, she is an incredible artist and I love her dearly. She's a great friend of mine. And this fluid art is something that I saw her theme. I think she did it last year at some point and I was just floored by it and I was like I know I have to do this at some point but I don't want to copy her theme in or take inspiration from her theme in my bullet journal so what if I go ahead and do it now <laughs> so I decided to do it on the back of this card just because I thought this would be a little bit busy for the front with the address so I like that the front is busier and then the back gets into a really fun artistic style and it's actually really really easy to do so I will link some more information about Haley's art and all of her uh, all of her amazing work <laughs> down below and I really really encourage you to check it out this style is so much fun and and super friendly for beginning artists. I'm so happy with how this ended up looking and props to Haley. This is a gorgeous theme that you did and I'm really, really excited to have done this as well. And here is the final product. So this is all from stuff that I had laying around my house. So I had a bunch of stuff from Michael's. I had like the stickers, um, the holographic, pad over here that you can see. <laughs> I love hollow foil. Um, and I picked this one in particular because this has holographic foil also. And then I was like, oh, well, why not make it a birthday card? 
um, because this little girl is eating cake. And I was gonna bring in some like extra washi and stuff, but I don't know, I felt like this like spoke enough on its own and I didn't want it to get too cluttered. So I have the happy birthday written along the top here in my calligraphy, which I used a Tombow Fudenosuke brush pen for that. And I laid it out using this letter mate, but you don't really need this. Um, you can just do it with measuring and doing it with a regular ruler. Um, but I had this around the house from when I was addressing my wedding invitations. So I decided just to use this as well. Um, and then I was like, well, what does holographic remind me of? And for some reason it reminded me of the Little Mermaid. So I decided to address it to Eric and Ariel, One Ocean Way, Magic Kingdom, Florida. That's not a real address, <laughs> by the way. And if you want, if you're nervous about like little things um, not making it through their, uh, the postal service, um, you can just put tape over this entire thing and that'll work perfectly fine also. And uh, I don't have a stamp because I ordered a bunch to help with the funding issue for USPS and I encourage you all to do the same if you live in the United States. So that would go up here. And I thought that this was nice and simple um, so that the lettering would pop and I paired some black and white together because that looks great on craft paper. And then as I mentioned in the voiceover, I really wanted to try that fluid art from Haley. So I thought that it would be fun to um, use colors that I think of when I think of holographic, which is like the light blue and the purples and make that fluid art style um, with the uh, acrylic paint. So I decided to do that on the back. I was going to do this washi across. I'm, I'm still not sure if I want to do that. It kind of creates a cool separation though. So I think I might just add this really quick. Do I like that? I think I like that. I could have just ruined it. <laughs> But to be honest, it's art, so there, there's not much you can do to ruin it. If you are proud of what you end up doing at the end. So yeah, that looks great because it hides like the middle section. Um, so this is really fun. So adding that little extra holographic to pull in with the front. So that is my envelope art. I would love for anyone doing snail mail to tag me on Instagram at Aaron Flota Designs, and I'll be happy to share those in my stories uh, because I think that this would be a lot of fun and is a great movement and for a great cause, even if you aren't in the United States and <laughs> not um, aware of the postal service issues that we've been having. So thank you so, so much. I hope you like this video. I hope you like this uh, nice, fun envelope art that I put together today. And I will see you on Friday for my September plan with me. Um, just an FYI, it's going to be a good one. I know because I've been working on it. <laughs> so I hope you love everything about this. Uh, please like, comment down below. Uh, tag me on Instagram if you do any sort of envelope art yourself. And I will see you on Friday. Bye, everyone.